Happy New Year. It is the year of 2025, but did you know that this year comes with some very interesting mathematical properties? And we're going to be looking at those in today's video. So let's dive straight in. The first really cool property, and probably the one that's been talked about the most, is that 2025 is probably the only square number that we will ever see in our lifetime. So 2025 is 45 squared. Now, 44 squared was 1936. So if you're watching this and you were born in 1936 or before, then congratulations, you've already seen a square year number. But the one after 45 squared is, of course, 46 squared, and that is 2116. So sadly, I don't think I'm going to make it to that year, and I'm sure many of you watching this video may also not make it to that year, as morbid as that sounds. But that's why I find this year so special, because it probably is the first and only square number that we will see in our lifetime. So that's a really nice one to start off with. Now let's look at some more fun facts about the year 2025. People have been quite creative in figuring out what 2025 can equal in terms of certain formulas and equations. One of my favourites is this one on the screen where we have 20 plus 25, all in a bracket, times open bracket 20 plus 25 close bracket, does of course equal 2025 because that is just 45 squared. So people have been very creative and I saw on Instagram by a user called Methinity, I think it's a combination of maths and infinity, or maths should I say, sorry people that aren't from the UK and don't say maths don't come for me, <laughs> but he did a fantastic one which was the square root of 2025 which of course we know is 45 equals, we have 2 plus 0 factorial, close bracket, all squared multiplied by 5 uh, and that's the equation there, but it's fantastic because we have 2025, the numbers that make up that number on the left and right hand side. So I thought that was a really, really fun property that we have for this year's number. I've loved how creative people have been with these. Now, the next one that I think is really, really cool, I found this online and it's basically where if you take the year 2025 and you write the number one, one time and then the number two two times the number three three times and you do this for a full number so it would start with one then two two three 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 and so on until you get to the number 45 the total number of digits in this number is 2025 and i thought that was really really cool because not only does it start you know in this pattern but it ends with the square number that it is so 45 squared is 2025 so the numbers, the digits in this number add up to 2025 and apparently, I haven't checked this, I haven't proved this, but apparently this is the only case for a number that's greater than one that this happens to and I just thought that was really kind of, without sounding too nerdy, quite magical in a way. You know, researching into the year 2025, the number itself, there have been some really beautiful properties and yeah, that's why I created this video because it's it's been really fascinating. But this one in particular, yeah, I really, really liked. Let me know if you've seen any other cool tricks like this in the comment section. Another really cool property that you might have already seen is that the number 2025 is actually equal to the sum of the first nine numbers all squared. Now, it doesn't just stop there. The year 2025 is also the sum of the first nine cubes. Now, you might be looking at these two equations here and thinking, is this just a coincidence? Is this another really cool property of the year 2025? But it's not a coincidence. There's actually a really nice uh, reason for this and it's got a lot to do with triangular numbers. So we're going to discuss that in a bit more detail now. So firstly, let's discuss what triangular numbers are. To understand triangular numbers, it works best to visualise them. So the idea is that we have this triangular pattern and so T1 would equal 1 because we have one dot. But let's say we want to create a triangle from this. We'd have two dots on the bottom and one above. So here we have T2 equals three because there are three dots inside this arrangement. Now let's extend it one further. How would we make this an even bigger triangle? Well, we just add another row beneath. So we'd add three more dots here. And so T3 in this case would be six. And so a kind of complex definition of this would be that the nth triangular number is the number of dots in the triangular arrangement with n dots on each side. And it's equal to the sum of the n natural numbers from one to n. Now there's a really cool property that follows on from this. And it says that the sum of the first n cubes is the square of the nth triangular number. And this is what this means in mathematical formulation. And to visualize this graphically, 
it's really, really beautiful. I saw an Instagram reel of somebody doing this and this is what it looks like. And it's a really, really elegant and beautiful property in number theory. And I thought I'd mention it in this video because yeah, we love maths. Now, obviously you've seen this graphical kind of solution to it. So we've seen the cubes and then we've seen um, the square and we've seen that it can be equal in that way. But because we're all nerds on this channel and we love maths, I thought I would show you a really nice proof by induction to show that this actually holds. Okay, cool. So this is our statement here and we want to prove it. So let's prove it by one of my favorite methods, which is proof by induction. So let's take a look. So the first step that we want to do with a proof by induction is basically say, okay, well, let's consider the n equals one case. So I'm just going to put step one and we'll put show it's true for n equals one case. Okay, all we have to do is substitute n equals one into here. And so we have that the left hand side equals one squared, which is one. And then we have that the right hand side is one cubed, which equals one. And so from this, we can say, therefore true for n equals one. Amazing. Now, step number two, hopefully you'll know with induction, we want to say, okay, we're going to assume that it's true for n equals k. And so if we want to assume it's true for n equals k, then all we say is, okay, well, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k all squared equals 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all the way up to k cubed. Because this follows the exact same definition that we have here, just with n equals k substituted in. Perfect. So we've assumed that it's true for n equals k. Now what we can do is we can show that it's true for n equals k plus one. So let's show that it's true for n equals k plus one. So I'm gonna start with this hand side first. Um, and so we'll say that the right hand side, well, we know it's one cubed plus two cubed plus dot, 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 plus k cubed plus k plus one cubed. Okay, now you'll notice that here, this is what we've already stated in our n equals k case here. So we've already said, okay, well this, which is here, equals this. So we can just substitute this in for this. So let's do that. So this equals one plus two plus three, all the way up to k, all squared, and then not forgetting the k plus one cubed here. Now we know that this here, so one plus two plus three plus all the way up to k, we know that this is equal to k over two, one plus k. And so this is all squared. And that's just because we're summing numbers from one up to k, and that's the definition of it here. And not forgetting this final part, k plus one cubed. Okay, let's expand this out. So we have k squared over 4, 1 plus k squared plus k plus 1 cubed. Now we can collect terms in here. So we know that we have a 1 plus k here squared. So here we would have k squared over 4 plus k plus 1. Now what we can do is we can tidy this up here. And so I'm going to take out a factor of a quarter out of here. So you'd end up with one plus k squared divided by four. And then we have k squared plus four k plus four. Now the eagle eyed amongst you might notice that we can factorize this into something very nice. So we end up with one plus k squared divided by four multiplied by k plus two all squared. Now it's important to note that what we eventually want to end up with is because we've started with the right hand side here, what we want to end up with is a kind of an equation for this. So we have one plus two plus three, then we'd have plus k and we'd have plus a k plus one in here. So we can kind of reverse what step we made here. So we took this step here and jumped into this, but we can do something similar here and almost reverse that. So let's reverse it and kind of get it into a similar form that looks like this. So we'd have, we'd have 1 plus k, k plus 2 divided by 2 all squared. Now the trick here is to note that we can reverse what we've just done when we made this step. So we went from this step to this step here, but we can 
do the same here but reverse it so we can end up taking this and reversing it so we get a really nice formula for 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on. So we can write this really nicely as 1 plus k divided by 2 lots of k plus 1 plus 1 all squared. Now if we look at the definition of series in this case this is actually the same as 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to k plus 1, all squared. And that equals the left-hand side for n equals k plus 1. And so we can finish off and, and write out that by, you know, proof by induction, we've seen that this holds for n equals k plus 1, and so therefore it must hold for n equals k. And so, yeah, we have proved that this statement is indeed true, which is kind of showing you how we know that we can relate 2025 in this way because it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 9. And yeah, it's really, really nice. So hopefully you've enjoyed this proof. But now I'm going to move on to another really, really cool property of the number 2025. Now, the next property that I want to talk about is a property that holds for 2025, but it does also hold for any square number. Now, hopefully most of you at home will know this if you are in the math domain, but I was quite surprised. I saw it on a Reddit post and there were a lot of people that didn't know about this really nice property. Um, and there's a really nice graphical solution for it. So it is that the sum of odd numbers equals a square number. So let's take a look at what that means exactly on my iPad and yeah, discuss a little bit of the solutions behind it because it is a really, really cool property. So we're saying that basically if we take the sum of odd numbers. Now odd numbers can be written in the form 2n plus 1. So if you just substitute any n into here you'll get an odd number. So n equals 0 gives you 1, n equals 1 gives you 3 and so on and so forth. So if we sum the odd numbers, now for our case we want to make 2025 and the way that we do that is from n equals 0 to 44. Now what this means is if we take all the odd numbers and add them up to 2 times 44 plus 1, this will give you 2025. Now, this here might look a little bit complicated, so let's break it down to very, very small steps. So first, let's take a look at the number 1 plus 3. So we're going to add 1 plus 3, which we obviously know are odd numbers, and this gives you 4, which we know is 2 squared. Okay, well, let's try it for 1 plus 3 plus 5. Okay, well, we know that's 9. And so we have 3 squared. Let's take it one further. Let's do 1 plus 3. <laughs> I forgot my odd numbers then. Plus 7. And so this gives 16. And so here we have 4 squared. I myself, as a mathematics graduate, who absolutely loves math. I know it might seem so intuitive to a lot of people, but I just think it's a really, really beautiful formula in a way. And so I thought I'd put it on here because it is, yeah, it's really beautiful and it works obviously for 2025 because it is a square number. And there is actually a really nice geometrical proof to it that you can kind of visualize and see how it works. And there is also an analytical proof as well, which yeah, we'll take a look into. So the geometrical proof for this, which I think is, is really nice, it's interesting really. So let's first start with like an odd number. So we'll denote an odd number here as, as a dot. That's okay, so we have one. And we know that obviously one squared is one and one is an odd number. But let's now add three to this. So let's fill in the remaining kind of spaces around this red, these red lines. And so here we have one denoted at the, the start plus three, and we can see this does indeed equal four. Now, if you were to extend this, and I'm just gonna fill it in now and, and show you what it will look like, you can see how this relates. So I'll come back once I've filled all of these dots in. <laughs> okay, so I've done it for up to 16, but you can see how this would extend even further if we were to fill in, you know, uh, further dots. But we can see that we have here, we have one plus three, this gives you four which is two squared. And then we have one plus three plus five here, which gives you nine, which is three squared. And then you can do the same again, one plus three plus five plus seven, and this gives you four squared, which is 16. And I thought that was a really, really beautiful uh, geometrical proof to it. So maybe I'm just getting overly excited, but I thought it was, yeah, a really nice kind of 
mathematical fact. So there we have it. Now there is a way that you can do this analytically and it's, it's quite simple. It's only like a couple of lines really. So let's say we're going to sum all the odd numbers. So this is going to be from k equals zero to n. Okay. So let's break this down. We know by the definition of summations, we can say that this is the sum from k equals zero to n of 2k plus the summation of k equals zero to n of one. And we know by definition that this here, because essentially what we're doing is we're going one plus one plus one plus one plus one all the way from k equals zero to n. Obviously they're not defined here, but we're still doing that summation. We can say that this here is equal to n plus one. Okay, so we get the same as we did before. But here we have n plus one. As an aside, hopefully, I mean, if you don't know it, that's okay. Um, that we can write the summation of k from k equals zero to n as this here. And so we can take this two out front and then substitute this in for this. And so we end up with here, we end up with two n, n plus one divided by two plus n plus one. And we can simplify this. So we end up with n squared plus n plus n plus one. And hopefully you'll see that this does indeed equal n plus one squared. And so from this, we can say that the summation of odd numbers will indeed result in a square number. So that's a really, really simple and nice analytic proof for that specific statement. Now, a fun one to finish this video off on was that I saw on Reddit when I was doing my research behind this, I yeah, absolutely love reading threads on Reddit, especially from mathematicians because they just get so deep and, and interesting. But I saw someone say that basically if you take the number 2025 and you put it into the alphabet clock, so we have in mod arithmetic, we have A equals zero and Z equals 25. And basically, if you do that for the number 2025, you get the letter X, which is, of course, a mathematician's favourite number. Number, letter. Could be a number, I guess. Variable, who knows? Um, but yeah, of course, it's a, it's a mathematician's favourite letter. So that is a very nice one to end on. But that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what other videos you want to see on this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.